What's up my beautiful bros, Beauty Maniac here with week 5 power rankings. Now, four weeks down the drain, the first quarter of this season has proved to be very interesting indeed. With so far, I'm happy that only two teams had a bye week, so it didn't mess too much up. It gets harder to really shuffle people around when there are like six or seven teams on the bye. But they only had two in week four, which I honestly kind of feel bad for the Panthers and Redskins. Having a bye so early can kind of be dis disadvantageous. Anyway, guys, let's get into the power rankings if you do not know how this works. Well, first of all, don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe if you are new for this. I do this every week. It's it's not that uh, thorough. It's more of a podcast type, type style of my thoughts of the NFL currently. If you don't want to listen to that, that's fine. You can go click something else. But anyway, on the right, we have the biggest gainer. On the left, we have the biggest loser. I'm going to go through 32-1, and one, try to give a little bit of an expose on them. Not too much. I'm going to try to make this under 20 minutes, but that's going to be hard because that gives me less than 30 seconds apiece. Anyway, let's get going on this. Cardinals, uh, Josh Rosen looked okay, but the whole Cardinals team looked kind of inept today. They're the only 0-4 team in the league, so, of course, they're 32nd. They were there last week, too, so they stay. At number 31, we have the Bills getting absolutely shut out by the Packers. They dropped three spots. Now, this one's tough for sure because they do show promise on offense, at least with Allen, but Allen showed how inconsistent he can be, at least this week. So they do drop this week, but they could very well go back up next week. At the f number 30, we have the 49ers, I believe, staying even right there. Uh, Bethard played okay. They lost a close game against the Chargers, and it looks like if Bethard can keep playing like this, they should be able to squeak out more wins than he did last year. With Bethard at quarterback, I should say, not after. And then at number 29, we have the Oakland Raiders gaining two spots. I, I almost put them up more, but good runs by Marshawn Lynch. Good, The receivers played well. Jared Cook played really well at tight end. The defense is still a severe issue. If they were playing, I think, any, almost anyone else but the Browns, they would have been exposed. So it's nice for them to get their first one. They do move up a little bit. If they can keep this momentum going, they'll move up more. At number 28, we have the New York Jets dropping one spot, so not too much after a loss. Tough game for Sam Darnold, but he's still um, still a rookie. Not much to say there. Rookies do have growing pains, as always. I kind of like the idea of them trading, possibly trading for Le'Veon Bell. I think that would be really cool. But in that scenario, I think you'd have to trade for Le'Veon Bell and possibly trade Blau Powell or Isaiah Crowell away as well, just because... Having those three players at running back, someone's not going to get the ball much at all. Wide receivers need to improve a little bit defense also as well, at least the linebacker core. The Lions at number 27 dropped three spots. They lost to the Cowboys, dropped to one and three. And the reason why they dropped so much compared to like everyone else, at least three spots, is a lot down here, especially at the bottom. Defense, way too predictable against the Cowboys. If they keep this up, they'll be lucky to win four or five games this year. And then at number 26, we have the New York Giants dropping three spots. The offensive line looked inept again. So, Quan Barkley had some nice runs. OBJ had two catches for negative four yards in the first half, and that is a huge concern. But Sterling Shepard really showed up. That defense got exposed a little bit, but they were facing an okay team, I should say. Uh, one and three, not too good. Hopefully they um, pick it up because the New York fans don't tend to like bad teams. And then at number 25, we have the Colts dropping three spots. They lost a tough game as well. I think Marlon Mack is still sidelined for the foreseeable future. And, you know, they're hanging on. They're hanging on. Andrew Luck is good. They play a short week on Thursday Night Football this week against the Patriots, so that should be a good game. They... Might not contend with the division, at least that's what it looks like so far. I'm not saying that they, they actually do have a chance, but I don't think they will. But they look like they could definitely prime themselves to contend next year, especially with all the young talent they have on offense and defense. At number 24, we have the Houston Texans getting their first dub of the season. Now, it seems weird someone getting their first dub being all the way up at 24. But the defensive line played incredible. Jadavion Clowney showed what he can bring. DeAndre Hopkins, Will Fuller, and... Cootie, cutie, show they can be a tremendous trio of wide receivers, and Deshaun Watson. <laughs> Number 23, we have the Browns dropping two spots, losing a tough overtime game to the Oakland Raiders because of stupid mental errors by Baker Mayfield. Not going to punish them too much, necessarily. I mean, four turnovers, absolutely horrendous. No one should ever find that acceptable. 
but he's a rookie, so where it is not acceptable, but it is kind of excusable because he is still growing. He's going to have to fix that, or the Browns could be in trouble for at least the next couple of years. Hopefully he does. I um I like the energy the crowd brings when Mayfield's on the field. And at number 22, we have the Dallas Cowboys gaining seven spots. That's why they're on the right here. Ezekiel Elliott leading the league in rushing, having a tremendous fantasy day. Wide receiver stepping up a little bit. Dak having a solid game as well. The defense is stepping it up, especially on the defensive line. And the offensive line looks to be putting it together a little bit more with Frederick still out. And at number 21, we have the Seattle Seahawks. I struggled actually moving them up to 21. They gained four spots. One reason is they did win. They did win against a decent opponent, but the loss of Earl Thomas. And I don't like to necessarily dump people down because of injuries, because when you dump someone down because of injuries, you're also basically saying that someone else gains spots because someone else got hurt. It's kind of one of those uh, moral ground kind of things. Thomas looks like he's going to be out for the rest of the year. Finally, when the Seahawks were about to trade him to the Chiefs, I feel bad for him. Interesting thing, he flipped off the crowd. But um, Penny, I think his name's Penny, had or Dave, Mike Davis, had a good rushing day for the Seattle Seahawks. And that's really promising. I'm not sure how the defense is going to look for Seattle, but if the offense can keep looking that solid, then they should at least be able to compete with almost anybody. And then at number 20, we have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers dropping three spots. It looks like Jameis Winston is going to start from now on. And that defense doesn't look like it could stop a mouse from escaping a wet paper bag made out of sand. Think about that. Uh, I don't know, just the defense just looks awful. I don't know if it's that Connolly, that they just that demoralizing stiff arm that has them in a funk. But hopefully they bounce back. That I know what that offense is capable of. We all saw it the first two weeks. I know what that defense can be capable of. They got tremendous talent. But maybe it's like a JPP curse. And then at number 19, we have the Falcons dropping six spots. I have the Falcons dropping six spots. Obviously, they lost three starters on defense, and it is absolutely hurting them. They faced the Saints, they faced the Bengals, and they got torched. I think they're statistically the first team to score 30 points in so many weeks in a row and lose. Matt Ryan has over 700 yards, and I think like seven touchdowns, eight touchdowns, something like that in the last two weeks, and lost both games. That defense is absolutely horrendous. They, I'm not saying they need to do certain things, but if they can make a move for a safety or a DB, maybe they should because they need help in that secondary. And then at number 18, we have the left-handed side team. The Pittsburgh Steelers dropping seven spots. James Conner looked awful, abysmal in this game. Big Ben looked awful, abysmal. Wide receivers didn't look that great either. Tight ends didn't look that... You know, the whole team didn't look that great. That defense looks like paper mache made out of ramen noodles. And it's just... A t it sucks because it's a team that everyone knows was in the playoffs last year. Lost to the Jaguars. They have tremendous talent. They didn't lose too much... Too, ma too many players, but... They're just not clicking how they should. I don't know if this funk is going to be season long or not. At number 17, we have the Miami Dolphins dropping two spots. Yes, they are 3-1, and one, but when your offense can only muster under 200 yards total, you do deserve a dip after a loss. And granted, it's only a two-loss, I mean two-person drop. If their offense finds more consistency, they'll be bound to go back up any time because Ryan Tannehill, uh, Stills, Wilson, and Amendola, they do have incredible talent on that offense. The major concern for me there is the defensive line. And then you have the Denver Broncos at number 16 gaining two spots on a loss, which is rare for people to gain on a loss. But they put up a great fight against one of the best teams in the league, the Chiefs. And quality of opponent or quality of loss, I should say, is more of a factor in this one. Tough game for them. Keenum looked okay, made some bad mistakes over, but the combination of Royce Freeman and Philip Lindsay looks like it could be extremely dangerous. It could possibly be the next Ingram and Kamara. I'm not saying they're as good. I'm just saying they're they remind me of that that pairing. Speaking of that, Ingram is back. And at number fifteen we have the Chargers getting 
Corey Legit back. I believe his last name is pronounced Legit. Gaining five spots, coming off a good win against the San Francisco 49ers. Getting a stalwart on your defensive line back is also going to make a huge impact. Melvin Gordon looks tremendous. I like the pairing of Williams and Allen at wide receiver. Phillip Rivers is having another good year, and Gates scored a touchdown. I mean, come on, Antonio Gates scored another touchdown. At number 14, we have the New England Patriots gaining five spots. The defense looks to be at least more consistent. I'm not saying they're going to be a lot. They're a lot better, but they look to be more consistent, and that's exactly what they need: is consistency and effort. Um, Julian Edelman comes back. Josh Gordon played last week, had two catches for I believe 30 something yards, which is good for his first game with the Patriots. Um, the offense looked to play better. Patterson looks to be getting more of the offense intact. And Sony Michelle had a really good game with, I believe, 25 carries, 112 yards, and a touchdown, something like that. Go Georgia Bulldogs! At number 13, we have the Minnesota Vikings dropping seven spots. Um, one, two, and one. There's not much to say about that. They're probably the highest-rated team with such a bad record. They faced tough competition so far this season, facing the Rams so early on. Not that easy when um, Anthony Barr looks to be having um anxiety out on the field that's the best way I can describe it doesn't look like himself from previous years the offense doesn't seem to be able to get it together either I think Cook's hurt or struggling Murray's not really playing as well as he could uh that offense is gonna need a bail amount but Kirk Cousins is struggling at least a little bit if they can turn it around, they should be able to jump back up in the top five. They do have a tremendously talented roster, and it's kind of kind of sucks to see them have such a bad record. And at number 12, we have the Washington Redskins coming off a bye, actually gaining two spots, which is nice. Alex Smith having a great season. Uh, Adrian Peterson having kind of a resurgence year. The weak spot's probably wide receiver, but even there, they're doing okay. That defense line, that defense overall is a unit. Treme uh, not tremendous necessarily, but having a really, really solid year so far. And then at number 11, we have the Tennessee Titans beating the Philadelphia Eagles in overtime. Tremendous effort there. Corey Davis having a game of his life is just tremendous. That defense is playing much more solid. I love the effort. I love the, e the, the, the gritty plays the offense had as well. If they can muster more of that, especially with a player like Mike Vrabel as head coach, they should be able to squeak out some more wins, and technically they're in first place in their division because they own the tiebreaker over the Jaguars for that head-to-head -head matchup. At number 10, we have the Philadelphia Eagles dropping seven spots. Tough loss for them. Alshon Jeffrey is back, so if he gets closer to 100% and gets more in game shape, they should be bouncing back up pretty soon. The um, offensive line is uh, not looking good whatsoever, and that's a huge concern for me. At number 9, we have the Green Bay Packers coming off a good win over the Buffalo Bills. Aaron Rodgers didn't have a good game, and the offense overall didn't have a great game either. I think it was more quality of opponent that they were able to escape with the win. I'm not sure if they could have played like that and actually won against anybody else. Uh, but they did win, so they do have a 2-1-1 one one record, something like that. So top 10 spot they are worthy of. But they have to pick up the consistency, pick up the pace a little bit. And then you have the Bengals at number 8 gaining two spots. Cincinnati's been playing tremendous football. I I thought in that game against Atlanta they would have lost that one. But they played tremendously. Exploited the holes in the Atlanta defense created by the three injuries. Giovanni Bernard had a great game. Boyd had another great game. Ifree was having a great game before he got hurt. And that injury could be tremendously impactful on the Bengals. But... It looks to me like their backup tight end is poised to actually be capable of filling in. Pre in previous years, I've noticed watching the Bengals that Eifert, the p replacement for Eifert wasn't able to necessarily step up, cur like step up in the same ability th to not hinder the offense. I mean, with AJ Green, Umuzi or Umose or whatever his name is. Him and Boyd and Ross has shown more effort this week, which was good. They showed definitely a lot of promise. And at number 7, we had, the, for, for the first time ever, the Chicago Bears cracked the top 10. They gained 5 spots to number 7. Trubitsky went off. 6 touchdowns, not easy to do. Yet again, Khalil Mack with 1 sack and a force fumble, or at least a sack and a force fumble in the same game for, I think, 4 weeks in a row. But it's so hard to find an elite pass rusher. Right, John Gruden? And 
That offense is just, the defense is just tremendous. They lost somebody. I apologize. I do not know his name, but hopefully he gets healthy soon. And then we have the Panthers gaining one spot to number six, coming off a bye. That defense and offense both look dangerous, and I believe they get Thomas Davis back. I don't, I don't think they get Thomas Davis back yet until after next week, because I believe his was four games. And where they had the bye, I don't think that counted. But they'll get him back soon, so that defense should get even better. At number five, we have the Baltimore Ravens. They had a tough week. A couple weeks ago with a tough loss, but they've bounced back three and one. Offense looks solid. Collins looks solid. That whole off, the wide receivers just look to be coming together so well. Crabtree, Sneed, and I, I forget the third one. Sorry. Defense looks tremendous, and they get Jimmy Smith back, so that should be a huge step up. We have the New Orleans Saints at number four, gaining one spot. Kamara looks to be a potential MVP candidate. He's having a tremendous year. Breeze just needs 201 yards to set the record for the most passing yards in NFL history. So next week's going to be an epic game, I believe, on Monday night against the Redskins. And then you have the Jacksonville Jaguars at number three, coming off a good win. Blake Bortles had a career high, I believe, 383 passing yards. I'm just rattling these numbers on the top of my head. They're not written down, guys, so I apologize if they're a little bit wrong. Defense looked to be stepping up a little bit. The major concern for the Jaguars, at least for me, is the health of... The health of Leonard Fournette, because I, I feel like if TJ Yeldon has to carry the load much more, he's going to start wearing down a little bit. And for the top two, we have the undefeated team, starting with the Kansas City Chiefs. Patrick Mahomes actually looked human this week against the Broncos with one rushing touchdown, one passing touchdown. You could see him make some mental mistakes, but you could see him make some even more plays than he made mistakes, so that is a tremendous thing. Did he get away with a couple of possible thrown, possible no calls? Maybe, but most teams usually do, so I'm not going to count that against him. Uh, Hill looked to struggle, but the defense looked to struggle a little bit. And I can imagine if they would have got Earl Thomas, this team probably would have vaulted to number one. And yeah, number one, you have the LA Rams. Tremendous, tremendous team this year. Absolutely talented. Goff, Gurley, Cooks, Woods. There's just not much else to say. The weakest point to this team is tight end, and even then, that's not really a weakness. Uh, the defense is playing absolutely out of their mind as well. They do miss Marcus Peters, and that could be a threat to them in the future. But he should be back before too too long. I don't think he's I don't think he's out for the full season. I think he is on IR, but I believe he's coming back. If I'm wrong, just let me know in the comment section down below. And thank you guys. I will see you in the next one. Peace.